you know, there's this uh, this specific electrifying feeling when a David doesn't just show up to the fight. But actually lands the stone. Exactly. Yeah. Lands it directly on the giant's forehead. Yeah. For the last two years, I mean, the entire conversation around generative AI has been just completely dominated by this idea of the compute moat. Right. The assumption that only the huge companies, the ones with trillion dollar budgets like Google and OpenAI, could even afford the H100 clusters needed to train a state of the art model. And that bedrock assumption just, well, just cracked wide open. It really did. We're talking about Runway, a startup with, what, maybe a hundred researchers on their team? And they just released their new flagship model, Gen 4.5. And this isn't just some minor update. No, not at all. It's a full-on architectural shift, a totally new way of doing things that has like instantly taken the crown in the video generation space. They even codenamed the project David. I yeah. mean, how perfect is that? And what makes this so captivating and really why we're digging into the sources today is how they won. Mm. It wasn't about throwing more compute at the problem. They won through... Uh, what the research papers call software efficiency. And a really radical technical innovation that fuses two different AI approaches. It's called autoregressive to diffusion, or A2D. A2D, okay. Precisely. So for you, the listener, who really needs to get up to speed on this competitive shakeup, our analysis today is basically a shortcut to understanding the impact of that choice. So we're going to synthesize why this isn't just another pretty AI tool. Exactly. It's a calculated, almost surgical strike on how we even think about video synthesis. We'll look at the tech, the features, and crucially, the cost structure that professionals have to deal with. And based on all the, you know, the objective third-party metrics we've seen, we can say this is currently the best AI video generator of 2025, mm -hmm. in terms of pure visual quality, at least. But there's a big but. A very big but. It's the critical caveat you need to understand. To get this quality, Runway made a fundamental trade-off. It comes with what one source called a significant silence you need to hear about. Boom. Okay, let's just jump right into that with the most objective piece of data we have. The leaderboard upset. Yes. Because we all know that in generative AI, those slick, highly curated marketing demos they show at the launch keynotes. They're functionally useless. Pretty much. Everyone shows their best 10 seconds. It's pure marketing. Which is exactly why the only metric that really cuts through the noise right now is the video arena from artificial analysis. Right. Think of it like the ultimate blind taste test. The Pepsi challenge for text to video AI. That's a perfect way to put it. Users see two clips from the same prompt. They're totally anonymous and they vote for the better one. Ten of thousands of votes. And the results. They weren't just favorable to Runway, they were, I mean, system shattering. They confirm that Runway Gen 4.5 is the new undisputed leader. It established an ELO score of 12,247. Okay, so that ELO score is the proof. The efficiency in the architecture actually turned into real quality. But for those of us who don't live and breathe competitive rating systems, why is that number such a huge deal? It's the margin of victory that's so fascinating. The previous leader was Google's VO3, which was a huge leap forward just a few months ago, sure. right? Everyone was talking about it. It scored 12,226. That 21-point gap in the ELO system is statistically immense. It's not a small bump. What does that mean in, like, practical terms? It means that if you put Runway and Google head-to-head -head 100 times in a blind test, Runway would be expected to win about 53 or 54 of those comparisons. Consistent. So it's not a fluke. It's a real verified preference across thousands of votes. Exactly. And the other big shocker, especially for people following the AI race, is where OpenAI's Sora 2 Pro landed. Oh, yeah. The model that had all the hype. It's sitting all the way down in seventh place with a score of 12,206. It just reinforces that harsh reality in this field. You are only as good as your last shipment. The sources are crystal clear that when users see these clips side by side, they just gravitate towards Runway's output. And they say the crispness in motion, right? That and something more important. The model's sheer fidelity to the really complex details in the original text prompt. Okay, so the performance is confirmed. Now we have to get into the, uh, the engine room. We need to talk about how they did this because... The genius of this small team is really in that A2D advantage. Right. So we've established they solved a really foundational problem that's plagued video generation from the very beginning. Historically, AR models had to pick a side, a camp. You had diffusion models on one side. Yes. And they're amazing at visual detail. They paint beautiful, pretty pixels, but they are notoriously bad at uh, what's called temporal consistency. That's the classic spaghetti problem, right? Where a still image looks fantastic, 
But the second things start to move, the background morphs or a person's hat just changes for no reason. That's it, exactly. Then on the other side, you had autoregressive models. They work a lot like large language models. So they're good at logic, at predicting what comes next in a sequence. They excel at it, but they often lack that high visual fidelity that diffusion gives you. Runway's insight was that pitting these two against each other was just the wrong way to think about it. So instead of a fight, they fused them. This autoregressive to diffusion, this A2D, how does that fusion actually work? especially in a way that saves money in compute. It's a brilliant pivot. They use the sequence logic of a language model, specifically a vision language model, similar to Quen 2.5 VL as the, let's call it the brain, the master planner. So it's the cheap part of the process. Very cheap, computationally. This planning stage understands the narrative. It decides, okay, the car's heading left, so in frame 100, it should still be heading left. It's right. only after that blueprint is made that they call in the expensive diffusion process to render the pixels in these optimized parallel blocks. Ah, okay. So the expensive part, the high-res painting, isn't running constantly and reinventing the wheel every single frame. The cheap logic brain gives it a consistent plan first. That is the core of their efficiency claim. And here's where it directly translates to what you see on screen and solves the huge physics problem object permanence. This has always been the holy grail. I mean, why couldn't older models just remember that an object existed? Because a diffusion-only model was basically starting from scratch every few frames. If a person walked behind a tree, the AI essentially treated them reappearing on the other side as a brand new prompt. It just forgot the person it had literally just rendered. Completely. And you'd get that classic glitch where they pop out wearing a different colored shirt or their briefcase is just gone. But with Gen 4.5, if a car drives into a tunnel. The same car exits the tunnel. That memory retention, that's monumental for telling any kind of coherent story. It's the direct result of having that logical, auto-regressive planner dictating the rules before the diffusion model starts painting. It's incredible. Yeah. And that leads to the other part of their genius, how they trained it so efficiently. The source has called it curriculum learning. Yes, specifically block size annealing and noise level annealing. This is how they beat models trained on billions more dollars of hardware. They didn't just train harder, they trained smarter. So let's go a bit deeper on block size annealing. How does that save computation? Okay, so the most expensive part of training is getting the model to render a full high fidelity, say, 16 frame clip. It just eats up GPU cycles. Right. Runway's curriculum approach starts the model on something much simpler. It first learns to predict just a tiny block of video, maybe four low resolution frames. It's like teaching a kid to draw a stick figure before asking for a portrait. And only once it masters that. Only once it masters that simple temporal logic, the training gradually anneals or increases the prediction window and the resolution. So they weren't wasting all those expensive H100 cycles on massive detailed calculations before the model even understood basic physics. They delayed the high cost stuff until the foundation was solid. Precisely. This incremental learning is believed to have cut their initial training costs by a huge factor. We're talking potentially millions in saved H100 rental costs compared to the brute force methods the giants were using. It wasn't about more data. It was a teaching victory. That perfectly explains the David code name. It was a well-aimed, highly engineered shot. So if that's the engine underneath, the real question for creators is, how does that A2D advantage actually show up on screen? Let's talk about the visual proof. The most immediate place you see the architecture's mastery is with liquids. Go oh, water. Water has always been the kryptonite of generative video. We've all seen those early AI clips where the ocean looks like, I don't know. Like animated putty or turbulent jelly. That's my favorite description. Yeah. Kipil and Jelly, yes. Gen 4.5 seems to have cracked this because the model understands the causality of motion. So it has this inherent causal reasoning. The source material confirms it. If you generate a video of a wave crashing, the foam dissipates logically over time. It doesn't just vanish or worse, reverse course. Mm. And crucially, it understands weight. Ah, characters don't just glide anymore. No, they don't glide across the pavement like ghosts. You can almost feel the impact from a footstep and see the correct secondary motion. I also appreciate that they're finally moving away from that standard, super polished, shiny AI look that plagued all the early models. Yes, the stylistic control is a huge step up. You've got your photorealistic, your cinematic, but the slice of life preset is the really interesting one. Tell me about that. It's fascinating because it's them acknowledging reality. 
It intentionally adds artifacts, a bit of grain, some focus imperfections to make the final video look exactly like a casual video you'd shoot on your iPhone or maybe even an old camcorder. That level of artistic control, it proves that tech is moving way beyond just being a novelty. Absolutely. But now yep. we have to circle back. We have to address the elephant in the room. This ties right back to that promise we made about the silence you need to hear about. It's the critical trade-off. Runaway Gen 4.5 is, for all intents and purposes, a silent film star. It doesn't generate audio. No audio at all. You get no synchronized footsteps, no ambient city noise, and absolutely no dialogue tracks. This is the main thing that separates it from its closest rival, Google VO. So Google VO wins big on convenience. You get a synchronized audio track right out of the box, a complete clip ready to share. Why would Runway make that omission? They chose to prioritize one thing above all else, visual quality and architectural simplicity. Integrating high quality synchronized audio is hard. It requires a second massive model, an audio diffusion network that has to communicate perfectly with the visual model. Which adds complexity and I assume cost. A lot of cost. Runway bet that their target audience, the professionals, often do their sound design separately anyway in dedicated audio tools. So the trade-off is clear. If you're a casual user who wants that one-click magic for a social media post, Google VO is probably for you. It wins on convenience, no question. But if you're after pure, unadulterated visual quality and scene fidelity, Runway Gen 4.5 is the winner. So for a serious editor, the lack of audio isn't a deal breaker. It's just standard procedure. But for a content creator who just wants a quick, complete reel for Instagram, having to add that extra step taking the video to another tool for sound effects or speech, that's a real point of friction. Okay, let's shift to the practical side of this. Using this amazing tool, as we said, it runs on those incredibly expensive H100 clusters, and that high cost is reflected directly in the price. It is. The whole system runs on credits, and you have to understand the exchange rate. It's roughly five credits for every one second of video you generate. So this is not a cheap, endless playground. It's high-end, high-cost computing. Exactly. And the pricing tiers are clearly designed to filter users by their needs. The free tier gives you a one-time grant of 125 credits. That gets you about 25 seconds of video. Just enough for a really thorough test drive of that A2D advantage. And for content creators, people putting out weekly videos, the pro plan seems like the sweet spot. It is. It's $28 a month, which gets you 2,250 credits. That translates to about seven and a half minutes of high quality video generation time. And then for the power users, like a studio or filmmaker who's constantly iterating, there's the unlimited plan for 76 dollars a month. Which offers unlimited generations, but and this is a critical note from the source material, those unlimited generations get throttled to a relaxed rate after you use your first 2,250 credits. They're protecting their compute from being abused. Mm. We also need to talk about security and data usage, the stuff that's usually buried in the fine print. Yes, this is so important. Runway has its SOC2 Type 2 certification, which is the gold standard for enterprise security. But you have to be aware of how your data is handled depending on your plan. This is the real exchange of value, right? If you're on the standard or pro plans, the videos you generate, mm. they can be used to train their future models. Right. You're paying with money, but you're also paying with the data. You're contributing to the hive mind. Which raises that critical business model question. Is the price of those lower tiers a little bit cheaper because the company is getting a stream of valuable training data from its users? The answer seems to be yes. And if you're a movie studio working on, say, an unreleased film, that's unacceptable. You can't have your IP feeding their model. Absolutely not. So you have to opt for the enterprise plan, which guarantees your data is siloed and is never used for training. So wrapping this all up, what's the final verdict? Did the David project actually work? Did architectural efficiency beat brute force? The verdict is crystal clear. Mm -hmm. Yes. Runway Gen 4.5 takes the crown purely on visual merit. It's brought a level of engineering rigor to this space that we just haven't seen before. It respects physics. It understands object permanence. And it offers that granular professional control that studios have been asking for. The David project was a success. They achieved a quality lead with a smarter architecture. So for you, the listener, the final advice based on all of this is really clear. Mm -hmm. Buy Runway Gen 4.5 to need the absolute highest visual quality. And you already have a workflow where you handle your audio separately. But wait for Google VO if what you really need is that seamless, all-in-one clip with synchronized sound. If convenience is more important to you than that last little bit of visual perfection. Before we sign off, we want to leave you with a final provocative thought. 
it builds directly on everything we just discussed about physics and engineering. You have 125 free credits waiting for you in the dashboard. Use them. Put this tech to the ultimate test. Go try to break the physics engine. Go try to break it yourself. <sighs> Create a video of something really complex, something causally tricky. Try, um... Try a glass of water spilling onto a carpet in zero gravity. Ooh, that's a good one. If that A2D model can correctly render the liquid floating, dispersing, and interacting in that kind of weird environment, yeah. you will see for yourself exactly what this architectural shift can do. That's a perfect way to test the difference between that old spaghetti consistency and true object permanence. Thanks for joining us for this analysis of Runway's big release. Thank you. We'll see you next time as we keep exploring this rapidly shifting world of generative media.